good day to all of you. I am S. Sivaram, former senior executive with 47 years of experience from Sachasai Paper and Boards Limited, E. Road, Tamil Nadu. I am very glad to share with all of you my knowledge on ISO. In this video, we will be discussing about latest EMS ISO 14001-2015 standard. First, let's see what are the contents in this video. The contents are what is EMS, evaluation of EMS, ISO 14000, why we need ISO 14001, roadmap for implementing EMS, key changes in ISO 14001, needs and expectation of interested parties, what is high level structure, PTCA and ISO 14001 clauses, benefits of ISO 14001. What is EMS? ISO 14000. EMS means Environment Management System like QMS ISO 9001 is for quality management which focuses on quality and customer satisfaction. This ISO 14000 is on international standard globally practiced in many organizations for effective environment management system. This standard guides and organizations to protect and minimize harmful effects on the environment caused by its business activities and also to improve their own performance. EMS designed in a structured way to identify and control the effects the organization has on the environment like pollution, usage of energy, resources, disposal of waste, environment risk, global warming, biodiversity, compliance legal, applicable legal and other requirements. Moreover, EMS helps and guides the organization to address all types of environmental issues. This is a continuous slide. EMS helps organizations to develop an effective environment management strategy for doing their business with ease. It also guides you how to identify environmental aspect impacts, risk and opposition in all your business activities. It helps in monitoring, measuring and evaluation of the effectiveness of environmental policy, procedures, objectives, targets and legal requirements periodically and show improvement. These EMS standards are used by third party for recommending the organization for ISO 14,000 certification if they meet all the requirements of EMS standards. ISO 14,000 some main focus points. ISO 14,000 focuses on three main requirements that is protect the environment, meet the compliance or legal obligation, enhance environmental performances in your business activities. The following potential issues are to be addressed. Impacts of business activities from raw material procurement to the end use and disposal of the product. Identify the pollution risk and ensure risk controls are in place. Impacts of land use and biodiversity. Impacts from the process materials and resources used. Impacts of suppliers, contractors, outsourced activities and products. Impacts on neighborhood. Impacts on climate change. Let's see the history and evaluation of ISO 14000. First edition of ISO 14000 was brought, was brought out in 1996, second in 2001. Now the third, uh, latest third edition was in 2015. This 2015 standard is designed to give more emphasis on and requirements for protecting environment as per EMS standards and enhance compatible with other management systems like quality management system that is ISO 9001 2015 and occupation health and safety management system that is ISO 14001 2018 standard. All these standards are sometimes integrated and named as IMS integrated management system. Of late, many organizations are going in for ISO IMS standards to reduce documents and paper work. Another important word in is environment in EMS. Let's see what environment really means. Environment means surroundings in which an organization operates. They are air, water, land, natural resources, flora, fauna, people and their interrelations with the activities of the business of the organization. While doing business, let's see what are the organization impacts on the environment. Some examples of environment impacts are air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, land pollution, ecosystem destruction and global warming and affecting biodiversity. Impacts can be negative or positive. We will learn more of these issues while doing environment aspect impact study in the next video. Why we need EMS? In this competitive world, doing and sustaining business is very difficult because of increasing stringent legal laws and other requirements. We need to be also in the good books of a neighborhood on environmental issues like prevention of pollution in air, water, noise, land and odor. EMS also guides us in the efficient use of resources like raw material, water, power, process chemicals, packing materials, etc. It also helps how 
to manage the waste generated in the business operations, degrading ecosystems, coexist with biodiversity, and ultimately how to combat climate change. In other words, it guides us what and how to monitor, measure, prevent pollution, and protect the environment. This is a continuation slide. We need to protect the environment from the potential impact of the business activities, products and services. Company formulates its own environment policy, sets time-bound EMPs, that is environment management programs, objectives with the target to address all the important environmental issues. Emphasis is placed on prevention that is proactive rather than taking corrective action that is reaction after harm has been done already. Promotes in improving public and community relations. Also helps in enhancing company's image and also the market share. Moreover, employees take pride in working in an ISO certified company. What is the roadmap for implementing EMS? Topmost commitment of top management is in implementing EMS is the in the organization. With the help of ISO consultant or an expert, update your existing EMS manuals and registers to meet the new ISO 14001-2015 standard. First, formulate an environment policy for the company. Next, conduct awareness training for all the stakeholders on ISO 14001. Create cross-functional teams to do aspect impact study in all the business activities as per life cycle perspective. Identify all the risks involved and also the opportunity for improvement in the course of the study. Establish EMPs, that is environment management program for the significant aspects identified which need to be addressed early. Also establish KPIs, that is key performance indicators with time-bound targets for department for achieving the EMPs. Monitor, measure and evaluate environment performances, take necessary quality action and ensure continual improvements in all the environmental activities. Follow PDCA cycle for improvement. Ultimately, think and act green in all the processes, products and services to save our planet and contain global warming. This slide is all about think and act green to save the earth. Environment policy should ensure green governance in conducting the business. Green education, green procurement, green in energy that is switched to renewable energy, conservation of resources, example fuel, water and power, prevent pollution and go in for green building. Let's see what are the key changes made in ISO 14000-2050 standard. Context of the organization, that is internal and external issues and needs and expertise and interest support. Environment sustainability, protect the environment, strategy focus, that is integration of EMS into business, risk-based thinking, that is risk and opportunities, aspect impact study, concerning life cycle perspective, high level structure, that is HLS card documentation. What is the meaning of context of the organization? First, we must know our organization vision, mission and values and purpose of our business. Then identify the organization issues and needs and requirements and interests of parties of the organization. Issues can be external or internal. External issues, we must be conversant with the present day political, economical, social, technological, legal and environmental factors whether international, national, regional or local that affects or will affect our business. Similarly, the internal issues like company's values, culture, knowledge and performance of the organization, capabilities and constraints are to be understood well for implementing EMS in the organization. We must also do SWOT analysis, SWOT SWOT analysis to know what are our strengths weaknesses, opportunities for further improvements and also our business threats. Necessary action plans are to be made ready for the addressing the negative points identified in the SWOT analysis. Under needs and expansion of interest parties, we should also fully know what are the requirements of the concerned stakeholders like customers, suppliers and regulatory bodies with respect to environment. We must take corrective action to address their requirements early for doing our businesses without any hindrance. Let's see who are the interest parties are. Interest parties mean, uh, means all the stakeholders of the company. It comprises of the shareholders of the company, customers, government officials, employees, money lenders, suppliers, community and society. First, we need to understand what are the needs and expectations of these interested parties relevant to environment and so we conduct a business activities in line with their needs and expectations to satisfy them. Another important keyword is environment sustainability. 
I know sustainable means that to create and maintain conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productivity harmony, thus fulfilling the sustainability three pillars that is social, economic and environmental needs of present and future generations. Some examples are avoid using and disposal of plastic materials to keep our oceans clean and to save the aquatic animals, planting trees to help protect the environment, procure goods from suppliers who do the recycling process to like to produce paper, glass, plastic, glass, etc. Boycott products that endanger flora and fauna. Conserve natural resources like water and power. Green your home and factories with solar energy. Use only LED bulbs and ensure rainwater harvesting systems are installed. Conserve fuel and reduce CO2 emission by carpooling or use bicycles for short distance journeys. Avoid using air conditioners and fridges that use refrigerant that affect ozone layer. Of late, many organizations are focusing on sustainability as a major force in the business. Hence, every organization has started to think and act green for sustaining the business since being green is competitive. Protecting the environment. Ensure your business activity do not lead to ozone layer depletion, global warming, acid rain, land and ocean contamination and deforestation. Ensure water and sanitation problems are well addressed to avoid contamination of land and groundwater. We must understand that we have not inherited this earth from our ancestors, but we have borrowed it from our children. And it is the moral duty of every one of us to hand over a clean, green and safe earth to our children to live peacefully, safely and happily. What is risk-based thinking? Organs are under constant pressure to improve their environmental performance. This can be mitigated and in some cases turned into opportunity to help your organization succeed if risks are identified in all the activ activities of the company's business starting from procuring raw materials to product and use and disposal. Risk-based thinking in ISO 14000 2005 provides a structured and systematic approach to managing environmental issues that are likely to impact your organization. Identifying and addressing the risk early will pave way for the success of your business. In other words, many organizations are focusing and stressing on risk-based thinking which is integrated in their business strategies for addressing the environmental issues early. What is life cycle perspective? Life cycle perspective means that an organization should control the way that its services and products are designed, manufactured, distributed, consumed and disposed of in such a way the environmental impacts are not ignored in the life cycle of its products that is from cradle to grave all the process activities and services are to be identified for conducting as per impact study and wherever there are risks and opportunities involved and show operation control are in place where we can control or influence. We will discuss this in detail in the next video during Aspect Impact Study. Here you have a brief discussion on environmental aspect impact in this slide. Aspects are the cause and impacts are the effect. An environmental aspect is any part of a company's activities, products and services that can interact or may interact with the environment either as positively or negatively. Changes to the environment either adverse or beneficial the result from environmental aspects are called environmental impacts. These could be chemicals that are emitted in the air from one of your processes or chemicals that could be expelled in your wastewater, solid waste disposal on land and indiscriminate use and wastage of resources. Aspect impact study is to be done as per life cycle perspective. What is the meaning of high level structure in EMS? High level structure that is HLS was introduced by ESO to give management system standards like QMS, EMS, Occupational Health and Safety Management a uniform structure with similar code contents and clauses. The aim behind this is to improve the alignment of different IO standards to form IMS that is integrated management system without any difficulty. High level structure is a set of 10 clauses with common terms, similar code tags, basic definition etc. It is structured as per PDCA cycle that is plan, do, check and act. First one to three clauses are introductory and these clauses are not audited. They are for reference and guidance only. The rest seven clauses that is from clause four to ten are the mandatory audible clauses which a company has to understand well, follow diligently if it wants its business to improve in respect to environment, environment satisfy the needs and customers requirements of interested parties comply with the applicable legal requirements and to become an ISO certified company. You can also see that these change clauses 4 to 10 are integrated with the PDSA cycle that P stands for plan, D for do, 
C for check and finally A for act. Clauses 4 to 7 that is context of the organization, leadership, planning and support comes under plan in PDA cycle. Clause 8 is operation which comes under do. Clause 9 performance evaluation comes under check and finally clause 10 improvement comes under act. Now let's see the structure of ISO 14001 PDCA and clauses explain in detail. Let's see the main clauses and subclauses from clause 4 to clause 10 and how they are grouped under PDA cycle. Under plan, clause 4 is the context of organization. Clause 4, subclause 4.1 is understanding the organization and its context, meaning first identify external internal issues that affect the purpose and also the goals of your organization. Next is 4.2 that is understanding the needs and expectation of the interested parties. Need to understand what are the expectation of suppliers, customers, employees, shareholders, legal authorities, neighborhood on whom you depend for sustaining a business. Monitor environment performance closely, review, evaluate periodically and address the gaps if any immediately. 4.3 Determining the scope of EMS Determine the boundaries and applicability EMS to the external and internal issues, compliance obligations, business activities, products and services of the organization. Determine where you can mitigate, control directly or influence only. 4.4 is Environment Management System. For enhancing its environment performance, the organization shall implement and maintain and continually improve the process in accordance with the requirements of this international standard. Next main clause 5 leadership and commitment subclass 4 5.1 deals with leadership and commitment top management takes responsible and accountability for the effectiveness of ems implementation and integration of ems requirements into all its business activities and strategies 5.2 is how to formulate the environmental policy company should first formulate its environment policy Policy should highlight setting of environmental objectives, protection of the environment, conserving natural resources and energy, compliance applicable legal and other requirements, continuing improvement involving all employees. 5.3 Organization roles and responsible authorities. Organization should ensure responsible authorities for relevant employees are assigned, well understood and committed to all of them. Next main clause 6 focus on planning. 6.1 talks how to identify risk and opportunity related to environmental aspects in all the activities of the business from raw material procurement, processing, product and use and disposal, prevent or reduce undesired effects wherever applicable. 6.2 deals with formulating the environmental objectives of the organization which should be smart that is objectives should be specific, measurable achievable, realistic and time bound. So objectives should be integrated into the organization businesses processes. Signaling aspects can be converted into EMP, EMPs that is environment management program with time bound targets and action plan for achieving them. Next main clause 7 is about support. Subclause 7.1 deals with resources that is ensure man, machine, material, measurement, infrastructure, conducive environment are provided for employees for doing businesses for, for implementing and following EMS in the organization with ease. Subclause 7.2 is about assessing and improving the competence of the working group. Ensure all employees are competent with the appropriate education and necessary training. Evaluate the effectiveness of the knowledge gained after training. Retrain them if needed. Maintain records. 7.3 Focus on awareness. Ensure all employees are aware of the organization's environment policy, environment objectives and targets, significant environment aspects and impacts, implications of not conforming with EMS requirements, not achieving EMP targets, and not not complying with environmental, legal and other should also be aware of the benefit EMS. 7.4 is about communication. Management should have a procedure to spell out what to be communicated, when, with whom and how to communicate to all the interested parties concerned. Prepare and maintain a communication register as evidence. 7.5 is about documented information that is how DMS documents are to be prepared, what are the relevant documents records to be maintained as per EMS requirement and proper identification for easy retrieval etc. Documents can be in digital form also. Next we come to do. Any and and against it is the main clause 8 operation. 
Sub clause 8.1 Operation Control Planning and Control Establish operating criteria and control for all the processes, products and services. Include outsourced processes too. Operation control on significant environmental impacts associated with the transportation, product use, end of life treatment and final disposal of products. Operation controls are to be reviewed and revised wherever necessary if there are any changes in the process, products and or services. 8.2 is emergency prepared and response. Prepare operation controls to prevent or mitigate adverse environmental impacts from emergency situations like, like fire accidents, chemical spills, gas leaks. Prepare SOPs that is standard operating procedures for emergency preparedness, give training, emergency contact numbers, conduct mock drills periodically and audit them. Display emergency preparedness SOPs and assembly points at appropriate places in the organization. Under check clause 9 performance evaluation. Sub clause 9.1 which talks about monitoring, measurement, analysis and everything. First determine what needs are to be monitored and measured that is methods, criteria and frequency for all the environment focus activities. Example key characteristics with specification of those activities that can have significant impacts on the environment. Analyze the root causes of problems and take immediate corrective action. Evaluate the effectiveness of corrective actions taken. Maintain documents as evidence for compliance of evaluation results. 9.2 is about how to conduct ISO internal audits. Select and train ISO internal auditors and audits. They should be a third in EMS requirements and the ISO 10 clauses. Audits to be conducted at planned intervals to ascertain whether EMS requirements are effectively implemented and maintained. Changes in the process, products and service affecting the organization and environment objectives and results of previous audits also to be audited. Audit results and corresponding documents to be maintained as evidence for the external third party audits. 9.3 is about conducting management review meetings. Management shall review EMS status to ensure its adequacy and effectiveness. Management review agenda should include status of actions taken from previous MR meeting, changes in the external interest issues relevant to EMS, needs of interest parties including legal compliance, significant environmental aspects, environmental objectives and targets like specific consumption of water, steam and energy, pattern of product, risk and opportunities, any changes in the process, adequacy of resources requirements, opportunities for continual improvements, etc. Under Act Clause 10 Improvement Sub Clause 10.1 General Organization shall determine opportunities for improvement and implement necessary action to achieve the intended outcomes of the EMS requirement. 10.2 is how to take correct actions on non-conformity. Take correct action to control and correct the non-conformity. Find the root causes for the non-conformities and ensure they do not occur again or occur elsewhere. Review the effectiveness of the correct action taken. 10.3 is about taking into proactive steps to continually improve the adequacy and effectiveness of EMS to enhance organizations and environmental performance by innovation, breakthrough changes in the process, products and services. We have come to the concluding part of this video. Let's see what are the benefits of EMS. EMS helps in improving organization efficiencies, uniformity, consistency and reduce costs by integrating environmental issues in, into business strategies. Set targets to reduce waste, natural resources and energy use. Reduces or eliminates the use of non-eco material, non-eco friendly and toxic materials in the processes. Guides and risk management approach for environment activities. Helps us how to work with contract to ensure companies' expectations are driven through the supply chain. Helps to monitor, measure and evaluate the environmental performance against environmental objectives and targets. Ensures compliance of statutory and other legal requirements. Boost company reputation and confidence among stakeholders that is customers, employees, legal authorities, contractors and neighborhood. My, my next video will be on EMS aspect impact study and legal requirements. Don't miss it.
Thank you all for your patience here. If you like to view my previous videos on Japanese 5 years concerts, TPM and ISO 9000 2015 standard, please search Learning with Sivaram in YouTube and click the icon Plant in Folded Hands and select videos so that you can view exclusively all my YouTube videos in sequence. If you like these videos, please press the like button and click the subscribe button and bell icon and share among your friends and others who will be interested. Once again, thank you all. Have a nice day.